welcome to Massive Open Online course on uh, basic principles and calculations in chemical engineering. We have uh, discussed basic uh, you know material balance principles and uh, also their applications by uh, you know discussing with several uh, you know uh, examples uh, and uh, up to module uh, 4 we have discussed these things. Uh, now, uh, we will start here uh, uh, module 5 uh, where we will discuss uh, about the basic principles of multiphase systems and uh, also the application of this uh, multiphase systems uh, for the engineering calculations. And in this uh, module uh, as a first lecture we will uh, discuss about that phase equilibrium uh, uh, in the you know that uh, this uh, uh, lecture will uh, you know cover that uh, you know what is the uh, phase rule and also how to calculate the vapor pressure. Many uh, chemical engineering processes are actually uh, being involved with you know uh, multiphase systems. What is actually that multiphase systems? We uh, have already uh, talked about that you know uh, only single uh, phase systems like you know that uh, liquid, uh, gas or uh, solid. Uh, these are you know that uh, uh, when uh, you know that uh, uh, will be using uh, as a you know single uh, entity uh, then it will be considered as a single uh, phase uh, even uh, its uh, you know uh, principles will be for that single phase principles and also whenever it will be flowing for a particular process that will be you know single phase flow. Now, when any uh, uh, chemical engineering operation or biochemical any other engineering operations they are uh, if uh, more than one phase will be involving then uh, the system will be you know uh, regarded as uh, the multiphase systems like you know that uh, uh, gas and liquid both will be flowing through the system even gas liquid solid will be uh, you know simultaneously uh, will be flowing through the system for a particular chemical engineering operation. Let us have an example for that. Suppose uh, if there is a flow of gas and liquid in a uh, you know uh, uh, in a particular uh, reactor or in a particular column, you will see that there may be used for uh, chemical engineering operation like absorption process. If suppose if you want to you know uh, remove uh, carbon dioxide gas from you know atmospheric air then what you have to do that a mixture of uh, air and carbon dioxide it will be passed through that you know uh, liquid medium like uh, if it is sodium hydroxide or some amine solution you will see that uh, that carbon dioxide gas will be absorbed by that you know uh, 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 by that liquid medium like you know alkali or you know that uh, amine solution the this type of operation uh, is called that two phase system even you will see that uh, other chemical engineering operation where uh, not only these two phases uh, there may be you know involving another phases like solid phase will be also uh, involving for a particular chemical engineering operation like uh, in a slurry uh, you know uh, bubble column reactor where you will see that uh, 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 synthesis gas like you know that uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas uh, will be you know uh, supplied through that uh, you know uh, uh, liquid medium uh, uh, in presence of catalyst particles uh, to you know synthesize that uh, you know different you know valuable products like gasoline even naphthene and also other uh, uh, different types of hydrocarbons uh, just by you know that processing of that gaseous mixture in a liquid medium uh, in presence of catalyst particles. So, this type of operation actually uh, is called that fischer tropsch synthesis where this gas liquid solid three phases are involved. So, this is called multiphase systems when you will see sometimes uh, from a uh, you know single phase you can have different uh, you know form of its uh, change of state like uh, liquid may be converting into solid or solid may be converting into liquid or gas may be converting into liquid or liquid may be converting into gas or gas may be converting to solid. So, uh, this uh, change of state from one phase to another phase 
you will see uh, uh, will be possible if you you know change the pressure or temperature there. So, uh, uh, by changing the pressure and temperature of the system you can change the state particular state from either by liquid or either by you know either uh, from uh, gaseous phase or either from solid phase to the other phases. Now, you will see at a particular pressure and temperature there will be a you know certain change of these phases. Now, you have to you know uh, note it down where that particular temperature and pressure by which you can get that you know uh, uh, that uh, change of this liquid like here at a particular uh, uh, pressure like 1 atmospheric pressure and 100 degrees Celsius you will see that uh, water is converting into you know vapor. So, this type of change of this uh, state like you know that some other sometimes this liquid will be converting into solid or you will see that the solid may be converting into liquid state like this. So, there will be a certain change of pressure and temperature by which you can get. Now, uh, what will be that equilibrium you know that temperature and pressure uh, at which that just uh, the uh, phase will be changing from that uh, its initial to the uh, final uh, state. So, that you know uh, that uh, transition or equilibrium condition can be represented by a uh, you know diagram. So, this diagram will be you know referred as a phase diagram. So, we will be dis discussing that phase diagram uh, on which you will see that how equilibrium condition of this you know uh, pressure and temperature based on which that uh, the state will be changing here. Uh, before going to that, that uh, representation of that equilibrium, uh, you know, uh, condition of pressure and temperature for conversion of, you know, that uh, one state to another state, we have to discuss that other different types of equilibrium may be, you know, uh, they are in the, you know, uh, 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 different chemical engineering processes uh, that also you have to know some extent. So, let us have that different types of chemical uh, you know uh, processing equilibrium like here one is called chemical equilibrium. This is basically a state in which uh, the you know concentration of the reactants and uh, you know that products have uh, you know no net change over time. So, this will be called as chemical equilibrium. Even sometimes you will see that there will be a certain change of you know that concentrations uh, just by diffusion. So, when the concentrations of the diffusing substance in the two components will be equal, then that you know uh, equilibrium condition or equal condition will be represented by diffusion equilibrium. Another you will see sometimes in a uh, uh, certain process. Uh, you will see sometimes that uh, ionic processes there, the distribution of ion species between uh, two ionic solutions uh, uh, that will be separated by a semi permeable membrane or boundary. So, there that uh, when this you know ionic uh, you know species will be equilibrium uh, uh, in condition for its distribution, then it will be called as Donen uh, you know equilibrium. Another uh, important uh, aspect of uh, equilibrium it is called dynamic equilibrium. In this case you will see that uh, the state in which uh, the two reversible processes will be occur uh, at the same uh, time rate at the, uh, uh, the same rate that is called dynamic equilibrium. Now, you will see uh, that uh, you know uh, sometimes the chemical equilibrium will be represented by a certain constant that will be called chemical equilibrium constant. This is basically a quantity that will be characterized a chemical equilibrium in a chemical reaction. Another important equilibrium it is called solubility equilibrium. Now, if any uh, chemical equilibrium between solid and dissolved states of a compound at saturation will happen, it will be called as solubility equilibrium. And uh, if suppose any state of thermodynamic system which is uh, you know in thermal or mechanical or chemical equilibrium exists then it will be actually uh, referred as thermodynamic equilibrium. You will see uh, for uh, you know whenever liquid will be you know converting into its vapor there will be a certain equilibrium condition at a certain temperature and pressure. So, that 
when a liquid will be converting into vapor and the vapor liquid equilibrium will be there. So, it uh, you know uh, may you know happen when that you know liquid will be converting into uh, uh, vapor that means that uh, uh, vaporization uh, process and sometimes you will see that vapor will be again uh, converting into a liquid. So, then it will be called as condensation process. So, when uh, the rates of condensation and vaporization of the material will be you know equal then there will be an equilibrium exist uh, between this vapor and liquid. So, that equilibrium will be called as vapor liquid equilibrium. Now, uh, what we actually talked about that there will be a phase uh, diagram. Uh, so, this is basically a you know graphical representation of uh, pressure and temperature uh, you know uh, at which uh, you can say that uh, this you know vapor and liquid uh, will be come in uh, into a uh, uh, equilibrium condition and it will be represented in that you know uh, uh, graphical uh, you know uh, diagram. So, it will be called as uh, phase diagram. So, a phase diagram is a graphical representation of the physical states of a substance under different conditions of temperature and pressure. Now, this uh, equilibrium can be actually you know uh, differentiated in terms of uh, you know state variables by a you know phase boundary or it, it is called the transition uh, you know uh, boundary or transition condition or you can say transition points on a phase diagram. So, this uh, you know if you uh, have different uh, you know transition point or equilibrium point and if you add those equilibrium points and represented by a profile or line that will be regarded as transition line or it can be considered as a phase diagram. So, the equilibrium state is distinguished in terms of you know state variables by uh, a phase boundary on a phase diagram. Now, here uh, see one uh, phase diagram is shown. Uh, by in the slides, uh, you will see that uh, this phase diagram, if you look uh, into this phase diagram, you will see that in x axis there will be a temperature in degree Celsius and in the y axis there will be you know pressure in atmosphere. And uh, you will see that there is some profiles that is here uh, shown like here B O, here uh, uh, what is that uh, B uh, O. Uh, then D A and also here O C and O uh, like uh, here uh, uh, like this uh, uh, O B and O dash O A dash. So, and uh, you will see that uh, uh, this uh, line will be representing here uh, as a you know phase boundary or you can say that transition uh, you know uh, line or boundary line. Uh, which will you know that uh, distinguish that you know uh, different phases. Now, if we uh, see that uh, uh, you know that uh, different points on this you know uh, phase boundary, what we can see here. Before going to that, we have to identify where is that other things are there. Like you will see some vapor, you know, uh, it is written here here it is written solid here it is written what is that liquid now see there are some regions here that will be uh, denoted by this here uh, vapor uh, you know region and it, uh, there is some regions where it will be you know liquid uh, solid region and where you will see that uh, some other uh, region uh, his, it will be you know that regarded as liquid uh, region now that phase boundary will segregate that region by its you know transition points. Now, uh, interestingly you will see that uh, this uh, equilibrium points are actually plotted based on that different you know temperature and pressure change. If you change the uh, system temperature and pressure and accordingly you will see that uh, there will be an equilibrium condition uh, equilibrium you know uh, temperature and pressure at which just you know that uh, the phase will be you know uh, changing from its initial stage to another state. Now, if we consider this you know boundary line here uh, that is B O, what exactly uh, it means? It means that 
uh, you know that uh, any point uh, here uh, under this you know that this uh, uh, boundary uh, uh, layer or boundary you know uh, uh, line you will see that at this point there will be a certain temperature and there will be a certain pressure. Now, at this point the whatever it is that the state will be you know the vapor state or vapor phase and here above this line there will be you know that solid phase. Like other point if you consider here E point you will see that this is the vapor phase at this temperature of 100 degree Celsius and pressure is at 100 uh, you know millimeter mercury. Now, you will see uh, uh, here again if we consider that point D here at this equilibrium condition at a certain temperature and pressure and this is the uh, you know boundary of these two phases of two phases. Similarly, here at F there will be a, you know that point at which certain temperature and pressure also this point will be represented by a solid state. Now, if we represent the you know phase diagram of water uh, you know uh, that and its vapor uh, system what will happen. Now, if we consider that liquid phase is converting into its solid and liquid phase is converting into its vapor and vice versa then how it can be represented. Now, if we consider that water you will see that if we consider this point F what will happen at this point we are getting here minus 40 degree Celsius whereas pressure is 10 atmosphere. What does it mean at this uh, temperature of minus 40 degree Celsius and 10 atmospheric pressure the water will become a solid and at an equilibrium condition of anywhere here uh, uh, in this line you will see that this is vapor to solid. So, it will be you know that vapor to solid F is actually at minus 40 degree centigrade this vapor will be water vapor will be converting into solid. Now, if we consider here uh, you know that uh, uh, point F uh, you will see that if we you know that uh, uh, change uh, the temperature uh, from its you know that uh, 100 degree Celsius or any suppose at 30 degree Celsius to uh, you know that minus 40 degree Celsius what will happen at the same temperature at the same pressure of 10 atmospheric pressure you will see that liquid water will be converted into solid. So, here this how at a particular uh, you know pressure if you change that temperature this liquid will be converting into solid and at this boundary you will see that at a particular temperature and pressure this uh, liquid just changing its uh, you know state to its solid. Similarly, at this point E what does it mean that if you uh, uh, you know change the temperature from 0 degree Celsius to uh, you know that 100 degree Celsius what will happen? you will see that this liquid will be converting into vapor at a constant you know pressure. Similarly, you can say that if you fixed your temperature and if you uh, lower its pressure you will see that liquid also will be converting into vapor. So, at a certain temperature if you uh, you know decrease the temperature that liquid water may tends to converting into a vapor. Similarly, at a particular temperature if you decrease uh, if you if you if you uh, you know uh, if you if you increase the you know uh, pressure you will see that vapor will be converting into liquid. Again at a particular you know that uh, pressure if you change the liquid from you know 0 degree to uh, you know minus uh, minus 40 degree Celsius you will see that or even you know minus uh, uh, minus 1 degree uh, or less than 0 degree Celsius you will see that liquid will be converting into a solid state. So, this phase diagram you will see very interesting that uh, from this phase diagram you will be able to say that how or what extent of pressure can be changed uh, uh, to get uh, you know that uh, the liquid to vapor or you can say that uh, solid to vapor or you can say that just by changing of its temperature how you can change the solid to liquid or you can say that uh, 
from liquid to vapor also. Now, at one atmospheric pressure, if you change, if you change uh, the temperature from 0 to 100 degrees Celsius, you will see that liquid automatically will be uh, changed to uh, you know vapor. So, in this way, this space diagram, if you uh, you know know to read, then from this you know pressure and temperature data, you will be able to say uh, what extent of pressure and what extent of temperature you can change to get its change of phases. Now, one important interesting point here, this is O point. Now, at this point you will see, if you consider water, you will see that this point, this is at uh, 0 0.0075 degree Celsius and pressure is 4.58 millimeter mercury. At this temperature and pressure, this water will be either solid or liquid or vapor. There will be you know that one point that you cannot say that will be solid or liquid or vapor. So, that is a state what is called that triple point state of water. So, this triple point is basically uh, refer that this water cannot be regarded as either solid or liquid or gas. All the three phases will be you know considered as this point here. Okay. So, here in this case uh, 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 this temperature and pressure will be called as triple point of water and this cannot be changed. Uh, you cannot get another value of triple point of water. This will be you know that always will be existence at this particular temperature and pressure. So, pure water if we consider that uh, here at 130 degree Celsius and 100 millimeter mercury that will be a gas that is point E, while it is solid at minus 40 degree Celsius and 10 atmosphere, but at 100 degree Celsius and 1 atmosphere it can be a gas liquid or a mixture of both. So, that will be point D and at 0 0.0098 degree Celsius and 4.58 millimeter mercury, it may be a solid, a liquid or a gas or any combination there. So, it will be regarded as point O and it is uh, called as triple point of water. So, at most you know temperature and pressure a single pure substance at equilibrium it will exist entirely as a solid, liquid or gas, but at a certain temperature and pressure two and all three phases may coexist. So, in this way this uh, by this uh, you know phase diagram you can assess whether at that particular temperature and pressure this you know uh, the what will be the state of that substances. Now, beyond this you know certain temperature and pressure you will see that the properties of that substances will drastically change that will be called as you know critical point. Now, beyond that critical point of that temperature and pressure you will see that there will be a change of properties of the substances. Whereas, you will see that uh, uh, some you know substances where suppose gases you will see that above 374 degree Celsius and uh, pressure of uh, you know at pressure uh, 218 atmosphere you will see some gases will be you know that incondensable that gases cannot be uh, you know converting into you know uh, 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 solid states solid uh, state. So, that temperature will be called as critical temperature. So, the critical temperature or critical point will be regarded as a condition where the gas cannot be changed into a uh, solid state or it cannot be condensable. So, this is uh, 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 the state of you know phase and how that state of phase can be you know that uh, you know represented in a diagram uh, that will be called phase diagram. Okay. Now, uh, as per that phase diagram, we can say that along vapor liquid equilibrium, pressure known as vapor pressure, uh, sometimes it will be denoted by P star 
or sometimes it will be denoted by P V and T at that equilibrium uh, line temperature will be known as boiling point of the liquid or dew point of the vapor. Along the solid liquid equilibrium this temperature will be known as melting point temperature or freezing temperature at particular pressure. Along this solid vapor equilibrium T known as sublimation temperature that is regarded as T s at pressure P. All transition temperatures like T m, T b, T s etcetera are functions of pressure. Now to condensate water you have to convert the vapor to liquid by decreasing the temperature or increasing the pressure. To evaporate water what you have to do? You have to convert the liquid to vapor by increasing temperature or decreasing the pressure. To freeze the water you have to convert the liquid to solid by decreasing temperature or increasing the pressure. So, this is the you know uh, uh, phase diagram will give you all this information from its transition point. Now, uh, what I told that to convert this uh, liquid water into its vapor. So, you have to you know uh, uh, specify certain things that what is that temperature and pressure. So, this temperature and pressure will be regarded as variables. Now, there are other so many variables will be there. So, for a particular uh, you know uh, representation of the state of a substance you have to specify certain variables. Now, how many specified variables to be there or how many variables to be specified that should be you know known to you. Now, that specification number of that variables can be estimated by a certain rule. So, that rule is called Gibbs phase rule. Suppose you have a closed vessel that contains three components like A, B, C that is distributed between gas and liquid phases and you wish to describe this system to someone else that is in sufficient detail for that person to duplicate it exactly. What must you specify there? You have to specify that system either by temperature or by pressure or by mol moles of that components or by mole fraction of that components or by mass fraction of that components or combination of these things. Now, these variables are not all independent in this case. Once some of them are specified, others are fixed by the nature. And in some cases, you will see that it may be required to calculate from physical properties of the system components there. So, according to these uh, system variables to specify the state of that particular you know substance you need to specify some variables out of these variables. Now, that how many variables to be specified to calculate that you have to follow that Gibbs phase rule. What that Gibbs phase rule will uh, actually uh, uh, you know says here in this case this rule is defined as a degrees of freedom which is basically number of intensive variables that can be specified independently for a system at its equilibrium condition which determine all remaining intensive properties. So, by that degrees of freedom you will be able to say that how many number of variables will be specified to represent its intensive properties. So, according to this Gibbs phase rule the equation here given in the slides as f that will be equal to 2 plus c minus p minus r. So, this is your you know mathematical expression for the Gibbs phase rule. In this case f is called degrees of freedom. 
C is called number of components are present in the system or number of species are present in the systems and P is called how many phases are there in the system and also R is called the number of reactions are going on in the system. So, according to these you will be able to calculate what should be the degrees of freedom based on this Gibbs phase rule and also you will be able to specify that system variables to represent its properties. Let us have an example for this. Now, in this case what should be the degrees of freedom for pure nitrogen gas at equilibrium condition. In this case the system here will consist only component 1 that is nitrogen gas one species phase is 1 because only gas was phase. Then according to this phase rule since there is no reaction is going on with this uh, 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 this uh, uh, you know uh, gas phase single gas phase then the you know degrees of freedom will be there f will be equal to 2. Then we can say that to represent its you know that intensive properties of this nitrogen you have to specify two variables to represent this properties that you know that uh, arbitrary two you know uh, intensive properties you can uh, represent. In this case all the intensive properties are here fixed. Now, so if we define temperature and pressure for the system and rho are fixed for this specific set of conditions then you can say that only degrees of freedom will be 2 and accordingly this only temperature and pressure will be specified there. Similarly, determine the degrees of freedom for each of the following system at equilibrium to specify a feasible set of independent variables for the system like pure liquid water here also you will see that degrees of freedom will be you know uh, 2 for this you know that uh, you know non reactive system because phase is 1 component is 1. So, uh, simply f will be equal to 2. Similarly, a mixture of liquid solid and vapor water in this case you will see that liquid solid and vapor 3 phase will be there p will be equal to 3 here and uh, you know component will be only what is that. Uh, uh, component is uh, uh, if it is coming from only water phase and C will be equal to 1 and then what we can say that uh, uh, F will be equal to 2 plus here C minus P minus R since it is non reactive so R will be equals to 0 then it will be coming as 2 plus C is equal to 1 minus phase is 3 then minus 0 then it is simply 0. That means here a mixture of liquid solid and vapor uh, uh, water will give you the degrees of freedom is 0. That means here you have to specify a particular you know uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, specific variables there and it cannot be changed. Okay. So, here uh, you know that uh, uh, degrees of freedom will be is equal to 0. So, there you will see that uh, uh, it is uh, coming as that uh, only you know that there will be no you know uh, pressure and temperature or other variables to be you know specified there. Okay. So, similarly here you will see that uh, other cases like a vapor of liquid mixture of acetone and methyl ethyl ketone then you just calculate here. Other example like this here a system contains water and carbon dioxide and exist in two phases vapor and liquid calculate the decrease degrees of freedom there. So, according to this Gibbs phase rule component is 2 phase is 2 reaction R uh, is equal to 0 here since there is no reaction. So, degrees of freedom will be equal to 2 here. So, 2 of the phase equilibrium variables must be given to fix all the others for example, pressure and temperature can be fixed or you can say pressure or x a or temperature and y b like mole fraction of that component. Variables p t y a note y b will be equals to 1 minus y a x a will be equal to 1 pure water assuming uh, here carbon dioxide is insoluble in water. Thus, fix any two variables and find the third from the equilibrium relationship.
Now, maximum number of degrees of freedom is equal to what? You will see that from the phase rule, when component will be 1, phase will be equals to only 1 and there will be no reaction if it is there, then according to that phase rule, degrees of freedom will be coming 2. So, anywhere you have to you know minimum 1 phase to be there and component if it is minimum 1, then degrees of freedom will be minimum of 2. So, from this it can be said that for any non-reactive one component system, the maximum number of degrees of freedom will be 2 and such a system can be represented completely by a two dimensional diagram and the most convenient variables are the pressure and temperature there. Now, in this case remember that the common form of ice, liquid water and water vapor exist together in a an equilibrium at the triple point of water. Since under such conditions C will be equal to 1, P is equal to 3, R is equal to 0, then degrees of freedom will be equal to 0. That means, system will be invariant. The triple point of water will be is equal to 0 0.098 degree Celsius and 4.58 millimeter of mercury. And if P is equal to 1 and F is equal to 2, then you can say that it is bivariant system. If phase 2 and degrees of freedom is 1, it will be called as univariant system. Whereas, if phase is equal to 3 and F is equal to 0, then it will be called invariant system. So, this to be remembered. Next, uh, let us uh, consider that bubble point, dew point and critical point as per that uh, phase diagram. Now, this bubble point is basically it is a temperature at which that saturation occurs in the liquid phase. In the case of liquid solution, you will see that composition of the vapor in the bubbles that form in the liquid is not same as that of the liquid and dew point it will be uh, the temperature at which saturation occurs in the gas phase for a given pressure and critical point it is basically the degrees of superheat condition that will refers to the difference in the temperature between the actual temperature and the dew point. And you will see that higher temperature and or higher pressures the difference between a gas and liquid eventually it will disappears and a supercritical fluid will form. And the point at which this super critical condition of the fluid will happen, it will be called as critical point. So, these things to be remembered. Now, uh, we are talking about that vapor liquid equilibrium in a binary system, if it is coming, then where this uh, you know that vapor liquid equilibrium will be required. Basically, in distillation column, most of the you know, uh, uh, you know uh, chemical engineering process there if uh, uh, two phases are involved uh, with uh, vapor and liquid, there you will see that you have to consider this vapor liquid equilibrium system. More than one component can be transferred from one phase to another there and each phase may or may not contain some uh, you know that of each uh, you know component and uh, occurs in uh, separation processes uh, such as distillation, adsorption, stripping and scrubbing processes. So, in this case these are important and uh, based on that Gibbs phase rule for binary system of this vapor liquid equilibrium. Since there is component is 2 and phase is 2 and in that case degrees of freedom will be 2. So, once temperature and pressure will be specified the composition of both the phases will be fixed there. So, according to that uh, this uh, you know based on that uh, you know uh, you will see that uh, you can uh, you know uh, uh, represent that uh, how pressure will be changing according to the mole fraction and temperature will be changing according to the you know uh, mole fraction and how that uh, that bubble point or dew point and uh, at its saturation condition uh, can be represented. So, that can you know be uh, you know uh, read from this you know uh, 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 this uh, phase diagram here based on mole fraction. Now, at this equilibrium condition you will see that uh, uh, vapor pressure is uh, important there because whenever uh, you know uh, liquid will be converting into vapor 
uh, above its you know liquid state there will be you know that some pressure will be exerting in that you know vapor phase then uh, it will be uh, regarded as that you know that uh, uh, vapor pressure now how that vapor pressure will be you know calculated so vapor pressure is basically uh, the function of temperature and uh, there will be certain uh, method to estimate in this case uh, i am not going to derive that equation just uh, simply i am giving that what is the you know uh, equation that uh, we are following to calculate that vapor pressure it is called clausius clapeyron equation by which you can calculate that vapor pressure uh, so uh, as per uh, you know uh, clapeyron equation the uh, vapor pressure will be you know that uh, uh, represented by this uh, this uh, here dp star by dt here p star is nothing but you know that vapor pressure vapor pressure and uh, sometimes this vapor pressure will be represented by pv also so this is also uh, you know vapor pressure vapor pressure okay and uh, it is actually is a function of temperature uh, so this uh, can be regarded by this uh, equation and where it is absolute temperature and here v g hat and uh, you know that uh, v l hat are the specific molar volumes of uh, gas and liquid uh, that is in uh, uh, equilibrium condition and uh, delta uh, h uh, hat that uh, you know that is the latent heat of vaporization that is energy required to vaporize one mole of liquid unless uh, pressure is uh, very high this uh, you know that uh, uh, difference in uh, uh, you know uh, that specific uh, molar volume of uh, you know gas and liquid will be you know uh, equal to you know that only uh, molar volume of gas uh, there and uh, in that case uh, assuming gas is ideal then according to that we can write this equation now uh, further assume that uh, you know that enthalpy change we will discuss later on also this enthalpy in the uh, separate lecture uh, there and uh, uh, in this case uh, this uh, enthalpy uh, change uh, uh, is actually temperature independent in the range of uh, you know certain interest so uh, based on which uh, this uh, you know uh, uh, this clapeyron equation is modified by uh, you know another equation uh, based on this uh, uh, you know uh, equation and uh, it is called clausius clapeyron equation and uh, this can be uh, you know represented by this equation here where in this case one uh, b terms is uh, coming it is called uh, you know uh, materials constant now it depends on that uh, uh, temperature and pressure accordingly so uh, at a particular temperature and pressure if you know that uh, you know vapor pressure uh, at a particular temperature if you know that vapor pressure then uh, if you substitute it and then uh, if you you know uh, simplify it you can get this equation at two different temperature now in that case uh, you need to uh, know that one temperature to find it out other temperature and corresponding uh, its vapor pressure there so this equation uh, will be used to uh, calculate the vapor pressure as per this clausius clapeyron equation now let us uh, do an example based on this uh, clausius uh, clapeyron equation to calculate the vapor pressure in this case uh, the uh, you know uh, if we say that vapor pressure of one propanol is uh, 10 torr uh, at uh, 14.7 degree celsius now calculate the vapor pressure at 40 uh, sorry 52.8 uh, degree celsius uh, in this case uh, 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 given that uh, heat of vaporization of one propanol is uh, given 47.2 kilo joule per mole so uh, if we use uh, this uh, clausius clapeyron equation here uh, uh, we can find out what should be the you know uh, uh, vapor pressure of that one propanol uh, at this 10 uh, uh, tor atmospheric pressure at 14.7 uh, uh, degree celsius so in this case uh, first of all you calculate this value you know this vapor pressure 
uh, at this you know 14.7 degree Celsius. So, accordingly if you substitute here uh, one uh, you know temperature like T1 you know that P1 you know that or if you know that T or PV there then accordingly what should be that uh, uh, PLV and uh, you know that T1 there uh, P1V and uh, T1 there. So, uh, after substitution of these values you can calculate that you know uh, vapor pressure at that temperature you know uh, uh, here 52.8 degree Celsius will be equal to 100.2 torr. Here 1 torr is uh, actually equals to 1 millimeter mercury pressure. So, remember it. Now, similarly you can try other uh, you know exercise problems like it is given here 3 problems are given here for your you know uh, uh, practice and uh, uh, accordingly you just you have to here. Uh, use that Clausius uh, Clapeyron equation to find out that you know vapor pressure there. Now, another equation is very important to find out that uh, vapor pressure, it is called Antoine's equation. Uh, this is an empirical uh, equation uh, for correlating that vapor pressure with the temperature data over a restricted temperature range. So, in this case, uh, this equation uh, of this Antoine is. Uh, represented by this equation here ln p v that will be equal to a minus b by c plus t here. In this case the units of vapor pressure and temperature are millimeter mercury and Kelvin respectively. So, whenever you are going to use this Antony equation to find out the vapor pressure you have to convert all the pressure units in terms of you know millimeter mercury and temperature in Kelvin then only you will get. So, otherwise uh, 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 you have to convert other parameters also to get this paper pressure uh, in other units. In this case see uh, constants A, B and C are there, these are called material uh, you know constants or sometimes it is called Antony's constants or Antony uh, coefficients and uh, these coefficients actually vary from substance to substance for different substance this uh, you know uh, coefficients will be different. Here some of the uh, example uh, 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 given for different components here uh, for like acetone, ammonia, benzene, ethanol, methanol, toluene, even water what should be that you know coefficients A, B, C at uh, uh, different temperature range there. So, you can use this uh, you know uh, coefficients uh, to calculate the vapor pressure at its different temperature based on this Antony's equation. Now, let us do an example for this. Now, uh, you uh, have given to calculate the vapor pressure of ethanol at 80 degree Celsius by using the Antony's equation. So, in this case uh, the vapor pressure uh, of ethanol you have to find out whereas, the coefficients are given for that uh, you know uh, ethanol are here A will be equal to uh, 21.8045 uh, uh, and here B is given C is given here. So, if you substitute that A B C value in that Antoine's equation and uh, temperature is uh, you know 80 degree Celsius you have to convert it to absolute temperature in Kelvin. So, it will be 80 plus 273.15. So, accordingly uh, after calculation you will get this vapor pressure will be you know that it will be coming 14468 uh, you know that millimeter mercury like this. Now, you can calculate the vapor pressure by other method it is called Cox chart. In this case the vapor pressure you know uh, can be estimated by plotting the uh, logarithm of the vapor pressure of certain compounds that is related to a reference uh, compound against an arbitrary temperature scale based on this Cox chart here given in this uh, slides one chart is given the where vapor pressure of ethanol is uh, you know how it is changing based on that reference uh, you know uh, materials uh, or reference uh, uh, you know uh, substance uh, vapor pressure there. So, this profile for the vapor pressure against a temperature is a straight line mainly for you know petroleum hydrocarbons and in this case a reference compound will be mainly water and this approach is very useful and can be much better than the Claveronic method and its accuracy is uh, you know that dependent 
to a large degrees on the readability of the chart. So, this first has given uh, by Cox uh, in 1923 uh, there and it has been published in Industrial Engineering and Chemistry there volume 15 uh, in 1923. So, according to that you can you know uh, represent this uh, uh, you know vapor pressure by that Cox art mathematically and this mathematical form of this uh, equation uh, is uh, this here. Uh, here see important that C is constant here in this equation and uh, P V here A 1, P V A 2 these are the you know that uh, vapor pressure of substance A at temperature T 1 and T 2 respectively and uh, this P A uh, uh, you know uh, 1 V and P V A 2 these are vapor pressure of substance A and uh, you know that uh, 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 at temperature T 1 and T 2 respectively. Now, if you know the uh, vapor pressure of this either set of this temperature, then you can easily calculate the other set of this you know vapor pressure of the components there uh, at different uh, you know temperature uh, you know uh, just by uh, uh, calculating uh, the coefficient C here. Okay. These are also uh, given this vapor pressure at different temperature based on this Coxart, how this you know that vapor pressure uh, will be uh, changing you know uh, 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 according to the temperature for the different you know hydrocarbons there. Now, let us do an example here. Now, uh, it is told that calculate the vapor pressure of ethanol at 60 degree Celsius by Coxart method. The following data are given in table here. So, in the table uh, it is given that at a different temperature the vapor pressure of water and vapor pressure of ethanol. Now, from equation here uh, you know as per Coxart uh, mathematical form we can say that uh, if we substitute this value of P V uh, for the components A 1 and A 2 uh, uh, you know that uh, at 2 uh, at a particular temperature. Uh, uh, even uh, for vapor pressure of uh, component B at that particular temperature you will see that you will get that you know that uh, 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 no component C there. So, you just substitute here then you will see that the values of C will be equal to 0 0.966 and therefore, then uh, you can find it out after substitution of uh, uh, value of C and then uh, uh, for other temperature what should be that you know vapor pressure there you can easily calculate. So, this ratio of vapor pressure of this component A 1 A 2 will be equal to 2.164. So, at that other temperature if you know that vapor pressure you know that uh, of component uh, uh, A 1 uh, then you can easily calculate what should be the vapor pressure of component A uh, 1 uh, based on this you know that uh, uh, value of this ratio of this vapor pressure of component A 1 and a 2. So, we have discussed uh, you know uh, that uh, different issue of this vapor liquid equilibrium condition, how to calculate the vapor pressure at that equilibrium condition and how pressure and uh, temperature can be changed to get that different equilibrium uh, condition of this you know state and also how to calculate the vapor pressure by different you know uh, methods that uh, has been discussed in this lecture. And also some examples are given you just uh, you know uh, practice uh, based on that examples and also you can collect other examples from other different books and you can solve that problem based on this you know uh, theory of uh, calculating the vapor pressure. So, uh, I would suggest you to uh, read further this textbook here and follow some examples problem uh, based on this theory and how you can uh, you know assess this vapor pressure based on the calculation of this uh, you know uh, vapor pressure equation and also how you can assess that equilibrium condition at different temperature and pressure. Uh, next lecture uh, we will uh, try to discuss uh, more about that equilibrium uh, conditions there we will try to discuss some laws of equilibrium condition uh, how to you know uh, uh, you know uh, calculate that uh, partial pressure and vapor pressure. Uh, uh, at its equilibrium condition and how it will be changing with respect to temperature and how mole fraction 
uh, will be changed uh, of this system and also how to calculate the humidity and saturation condition uh, based on this equilibrium system uh, condition uh, we will be discussing. So, thank you for this.